Hey folks, Scott Fisher here, and it is that time of year. You know, I like to do something festive, and we're not talking about Santa Claus. We're talking about Perchta, the Christmas witch. So Perchta's been depicted throughout history. She's a Germanic sort of a character who appears to you as an old lady if you've been bad, and as a beautiful lady if you've been good. And if you've been good, she'll leave you a coin. And if you've been bad, oh man, she's going to cut your belly open and put junk inside of it. How hardcore is that? They celebrate her over there in parades and stuff, and I love it when I see the double mask showing the old evil version and then the nicer version. So I took inspiration from those two in this painting of an actual Perchta, who is not the Perchta we're talking about, just another character. I love this painting. She came up in a Google search. So I took inspiration from those things and I combined them into what you see here. So this is a mixture of drawing on the computer and comping things together, added into the spinning wheels because it turns out that Perchta doesn't like you if you have unspun flax, man. And she's going to get you and she's going to use that knife and you're not going to get that sweet coin. Okay, I printed that out big and then 16 by 20 and then I rubbed graphite on the bottom of that printout and drew on top of that and then transferred it down on the board. That's the light graphite lines that you're seeing underneath this ink drawing. Then I took my Nico nib pens and my FW acrylic ink and I started inking this thing as the final drawing. Finding these pockets of detail, you know, filling out some things like these chains going down the, the flank of it, really thinking about trying to keep those lines flowing by now it's like the third time i've drawn this thing so you know i've got the lines pretty down taking cues from the costume that we saw earlier which was so fantastic but i had to change things up obviously to get it to work and get it to flow the way i want it to flow all right so now we're doing the hands in a slightly lighter color you can barely see the difference but it's there and i can see it in person and the idea is when i go over this with washes i want to be able to kind of still see my drawing but i don't want it to be so strong that it's distracting which is why i went with these sepias in this lighter color that you see in that cup that i mixed up okay having done that and got our drawing done it's time to start making a mess but first i sealed off the white areas the spinning wheels and some of the graphic stuff with brisket film. Now I'm going to use airbrush medium and I'm putting pure airbrush medium over the entire thing and now working the acrylic inks into it. I know this is going to be a largely brown painting so I'm going a little bit from the yellow browns to the purple browns and I'm sort of working it like a gradient as if you did a ball gradient out from the center of the piece. Just kind of you know just splashing it down. Now I'm spattering pure water into that which made these great textures. I used a hair dryer on that it kind of smoothed it out there and did some cool stuff. After that dried, I went back in with a big brush and I started knocking in some of the negative space. I'm trying to let, let this come out of the fog a little bit. I just don't want to go in and cut everything out with black and do everything really harshly out of the gate. I want to let it develop a little bit. So I'm finding my values and I'm finding my nooks and crannies uh, in these uh, sort of like warm browns and I'll, I'll switch over to some cool browns here. I cut out the negative space around that shoulder a little bit to get a sense of what might be happening here and just working it up a little bit. In the sleeve area I added a little bit more white. I'm a big fan of the Titan Buff Golden Acrylic which is like a fluid acrylic of theirs. Then I went ahead and I just blasted this background in big chunky brush strokes. We can silhouette, see the silhouette. Everything's kind of sitting pretty. And now it was time to start doing some details. So I took some yellowish, you know, browns and I kind of glazed it over what's going to be the gold for the chains. And now I'm taking a very small brush and I'm going in and kind of finding these tiny little nooks and crannies to kind of make things bounce. I'm doing the kind of ribbing that you see in the fabric there to differentiate the stripes. That was very easy. Since my middle value was there, I could just have to do these little squiggle lines. So most of that detailing is just two values or the under value, which might have a bit of a gradient. I went a little too blue on that sleeve on the right hand side. So I'm going to have to warm that up in a second. But, you know, I'm all over the place on this. I'm going to go ahead and paint up the knife. I'm painting that hand now and I really want it to look old and grizzled. So I went ahead and just kind of went in there and did some extra wrinkles, did it a little bit dark. You can see it there. Good example. I put down a wash first over this hand, a couple extra washes. Now I'm going to find, after I chunk in a few more shapes, I'm going to find some nooks and crannies, some little tiny areas to really get this to pop. And then it's a matter of just putting some highlights on after I do this redrawing. There you go. And suddenly we got a hand just like that. I put some moles and stuff on the other hand to make it a little grizzled and worked some of those highlights up the sleeve as you're seeing there. Again, this is all just acrylic ink still. That's a really contrasty photo, but it gives you an idea. 
So now it's time to paint this face. Now the older face, I wanted to be darker in value than the younger face. And I wanted it to be cooler in color too, a little more gray. So I mixed up some blue gray to paint most of these highlights, working on top of that middle value that I just scumbled on there. Now, once I worked it up a level, I worked it down a level. So you can see me adding darks into some of these sweet spots. And what's binding that whole face together is actually the middle values that are underneath. Scumbled on some color on top of that face, added a little bit more pink, a little bit more interest. Challenge for me on this face was actually not going for the dark color. We feel like we're not done with something until we get out the dark black or sepia and draw some stuff out, but I really wanted her to stay in the high key values. And it was pretty successful with that. I was pretty happy with it and kind of getting that red rimmed sort of eye thing where she's beautiful, but she's still kind of spooky. And I kind of like that. So that was pretty cool. Finally, putting in those little bits of dark, but still, that's nowhere near black, and it's not as dark as the darkest darks on the older face. Now you're seeing it again. Scumbled in that texture, covered up my drawing, but I can still see it through that translucent paint. And now I'm just going a little bit darker towards the shadow side, maybe a little bit cooler. And then I'm going a little bit lighter in some of the metal where it's catching reflection. A little cool highlight on the top of the hat. And then I'll do a little bit of warm highlighting sort of in the center area of the hat towards that feather that's going to be popping out. A little more work on the jewelry. Now I took big pieces of paper and I just wanted to make this very simple down there. So I used it as a sort of a pattern and a stencil and was able to kind of with a makeup brush, like a fat makeup brush, able to kind of scumble in some of these details without having to go in and try to make those really pure straight lines with the brush. It's a really cool way to kind of get some wrinkles and get some stuff really quick, especially in the areas that aren't as important as say the face and the sleeve and all that kind of thing. All right, and with those wrinkles kind of thrown in there, it's time for the magic, which is going to be taking off the frisket film that we did before. <laughs> it looks like I'm finger painting this on. Can you imagine if you could finger paint with this much detail? Now, this was a real pain. That frisket film stuck pretty good. I was really rubbing it hard. I probably have blisters on my hand as a result. I could have just transferred this later with some light Prismacolor and then inked it or used some like you know, uh, uh, some, some, you know, uh, enamel paint or something to draw this. But what I like about the Frisket film is that it has this rough textural vibe to it, which I love. And uh, it's something I kind of embrace. So, so I kind of, I like to keep it like that. If it gets too, too spotty, I can always go over the enamel later, but I just love how rough it feels. So we kind of covered it with some airbrush medium and here you go guys, the final piece. Guys, I appreciate you sticking with me through this one. I really enjoyed painting it. And uh, thanks, man. <laughs> Stick with me. You can follow me on Instagram. Uh, that's usually the best place. I'm Scott M. Fisher there. Uh, I'm on Facebook, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I appreciate it, guys. Stick with me. And hey, until next season, we'll see what we'll do. I don't know. I don't know what's going to be. Maybe we're going to have to paint Santa Claus. I might run out of spooky, spooky Christmas characters. Or maybe not. There's tons of them. All right, guys. Take care.